welcome. Today I'm gonna guide you through a slow class, which means lots of time in each posture to really ground yourself and maybe meditate on the word faithfulness. What I teach is Christian yoga, if you will, and you're welcome no matter what faith or belief you have. So when I say the word God, you can exchange that with something else if you prefer. So you just go along the open in body, soul and mind to whatever God has to offer to you today. Peace, maybe, love, faithfulness. Take that seat that feels the most comfortable for you right now. Maybe on a block if you have one. Gonna breathe for one minute with our eyes closed or just a focused gaze if, um, if that's better for you. Somewhere on the floor maybe. If you feel any unease in your body, you might choose to sigh out. <sighs> Maybe picturing a big ocean where you can drop all those worries or whatever you have on your mind and they'll disappear. And maybe that big ocean is God's love as well. Many, many times in the Bible, it is said that God is faithful. Faithful. What does that mean to you? I have to admit, when I think about the word faithful, I sometimes think about a dog, right? A faithful dog that follows its owner wherever the owner goes. Um, I don't believe God is like a dog following behind us, <laughs> but, but maybe anyway, that picture might be speaking to us anyway, like, like somebody who is just close, who don't let go. Whatever circumstances we're in, God is always there, never leaving. I just sit still and breathe for a moment more. Or just move freely on your mat, still seated. Faithful. It almost consists of two words, right? Faith and full. So maybe faithful is full of faith. In Psalms 36, in the Old Testament, in the Bible, verse 5, it says, Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your love, 
your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. If you haven't moved already, you might choose to move seated just for a moment. If you're ready, come into tabletop and still keep moving a little bit, whatever way you would prefer. Tap the toes under, maybe just take one or two breaths in downward facing dog. Or stay put in your tabletop. Downward facing dog is that posture with your hip up and back, your arms reaching forward. And then walk your feet to the top of the mat. And fold forward, remember to bend your knees as much as you need for the back to feel okay in this posture. Engage your core as you rolled up vertebrae by vertebrae into your mountain pose. One small flow sequence to get us warmed up. Reach your hands overhead. Go for a side bend with your arms, leaning your arms to your right side. Coming back to center, leaning forward again. Maybe you bring your arms out for that big circle. Fingers on the floor. Bring the right foot a large step back on the mat. Now, large step, you interpret take to that, whatever works for you. High lunge, reach the arms up overhead. You might choose not to go as deep as you could. Twisting, so turn your shoulders to your left side, towards the front leg there. Maybe arms just come out to the side. Coming back to center, hands overhead, and then kind of drop them down again. Step the back feet to meet the front of the front, at the front, fold forward. Opposite side, reach your arms up overhead. Both hands waving to your left side, side stretch. Back to center, fold forward. Lift up the left leg, tuck the toes under, put it back on the mat somewhere. See if you can stabilize yourself and find your high lunge. Twisting, so this time to your right side, so over that front leg in that direction. Coming back to center, lots of balance here. Again, hands reaching down, step the back foot to the front. Fold forward. One more time on each side. Coming up into high mountain, which means the arms over your head. Lean towards your right side with your arms. Back to center. Folding forward. Your right leg, step it back. Tuck the toes. High lunge. Twisting to your left side. Now, as we do all this, I say a lot of right and left cues. If that's not doable, just keep moving with me. Stepping the back foot to the front. You might actually just take a piece of paper, two pieces of paper, and write here, right and left on the mat. So if you get confused, just look down and you will see when I say right, oh yeah, that's right, and then you turn <laughs> in the same direction. So don't be... I'll be puzzled by, by left and right. Maybe just write it down, except that's where you are right now. And work with that. Repeating on the other side. I hope you're with me. Left leg. And stepping back. High lunge. Engage the core as you twist to your right side. Reach your arms up. And this time we're going to step the front foot back to a downward facing dog. Okay, tailbone kind of shifting up towards the sky. Bend your knees as much as you need in your down dog. 
No need for the heels to reach down. Just the direction of the mat, those heels. As you breathe here, you might take your shoulder blades a little bit back without pushing them too firmly. One more big breath. Lift the heels more off the mat, move into plank. You can take your plank on your elbows, on your knees, you can choose. Soften your knees though if you're on, on, on the toes with me. Bring your knees down, child's pose, so toenails on the floor and take your forehead down, maybe reach the floor. Where have you experienced God's faithfulness in your life? Reach up again to your downward facing dog. Now remember, tabletop is the typical less advanced version of what we're doing now because I'm gonna kick my right leg back. I'm gonna stay here in this posture and actually not just lifting the right leg up and back, I might use some energy on that, but I also wanna get a real stretch in the left leg, staying down on the floor, in the calves. So I wanna Get my heel somewhere down. Focus on my breathing. And then you bring the right knee, maybe in the middle of the mat. Take the left foot out to the side. So kick it out to the side like this. So you have your heel and your leg somewhat aligned. You're gonna stay put, I'm just gonna turn so you better can see what I'm doing. So you stay on your mat where you are. Take the right arm over your head and maybe grab your ear if you can reach that far. <laughs> and then lean towards your left side, holding onto your head and let the, that create a stretch on the side of your shoulder. And even down on the side of your core here side body Lifting up again, you again stay put. I'm just turning to show you. You might choose to, to tuck uh, the mat for the sake of the knee for this posture. We're going to do that, what I call um, warrior two, uh, mini warrior two. So take the leg out to the side and step it to the front. And I'm turning my shin here back and out. So I get like a warrior two position in most of my body, but I'm on my knee though. So I'm taking my hands out, firmly pushing the front foot down. If you can't do this due to any knee things, just find your regular warrior two with the sole of the foot at the back of the mat. Maybe noticing the front knee that it doesn't drop in, but use a lot of strength to keep that front knee there. And 
and unwind. So you kind of make your way out of this posture. I'm gonna take my left foot further out to the side, take the back knee off, oh, go for a bit of a stretch. Take the back foot to meet the front and fold forward. Lift your left leg up and back and try to lift it as high as you can. Just point the toes and go for a high lift. Now you can either stand and semi forward fold or go for the forward fold. I love holding on to my ankles as if my ankle is faithful here to keep me steady. It's working hard. I need to grasp the ankle if it's too much. It's just a bit of a bit of fun. One more breath. Let the fingers reach down, lower down the left foot at the back of the mat. Lunge, which will be the last posture in this sequence. So maybe wiggle the back foot further back if you want to go for a deep lunge posture. We're going to go for a twist after this though. Now gathering your palms and try to find muscle engagement in the shoulders as you stay here. Keep that engagement as you twist towards your right side, either hovering or let the knee drop down on the outer edge of the thigh, kind of pushing the elbow down into the thigh or the knee and the knee pushing into the elbow. Create that extra length in front of your chest. Modify with the back knee down if you prefer. And let go hands down and you might sigh out <laughs> just step back because it's a little bit tough what we've been doing here <sighs> in our everyday life we not, might not experience a lot of faithfulness it's a hard word today or a hard concept today, being faithful. Take your left leg, reach it back, sequence on the other side. Remember your tabletop if this is not accessible. Toes are pointing down on that left elevated foot or leg, and your heel is dropping down as much as possible on the right foot. And you still breathe a lot. Bringing your left knee down on the mat. And again, you might want to fold the mat or bring a blanket. Your right foot up to the side. So again, you're coming into this kind of thing is called gate lash posture. You stay. I just turn for the sake of the video or for the sake of you, hopefully, so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I want to keep hip and knee alignment. Your left arm over your head, hold the ear and then go for the right side. Oh, doesn't that feel amazing? If you tend to drop a little bit forward, push that elbow back as you lean to the right side. Let 
go. That mini warrior too. So again, just gonna show you. You're gonna take the right foot onto the front of the mat. You're gonna pivot or turn the shin. So the shin is aligned with the short end of the mat and the thigh is aligned with the long end of the mat. And you're gonna push or move <laughs> your pelvis and your whole hip to watch your front end of the mat. Arms out aligned with the floor. Breathe. Let go. Let's see if you can make your way around the mat here. Lift the back knee off and step to the front, fold forward. And maybe you'll shake yourself from side to side. Take the fingertips on the floor, a little bit of balance now. This time, right leg up. Now you can either keep it aligned with the floor or I prefer just to get into the glutes a little bit more to really lift as high as I possibly can my right leg up. And I'm not gonna go into my full version of forward fold as I wanna hold on to see what happens. I wanna hold on to my ankle. And try to breathe. Feel all those nice movements in my ankle. <laughs> Ooh. Let go right leg at the back of the mat. Lunge. So again, making my way up, shorten the distance, lengthen. If you want the maybe more muscle intense variation. But the pelvis though, somewhat kept, kept in, not so we're rounding the back, but not going for that huge arch in the back either. So just feel yourself, the hands on your body, your own hands here, noticing where things are can be so helpful. If we can't really, feel what we're doing. Getting that sensory input on the skin is really great. Twisting. Palms together. And again, notice the shoulders. Stay put with a hovering twist or coming down here. Can push elbow into knee and knee into elbow. And maybe extending without high, but extending the back leg. And release. Hands down, sit back, downward facing dog. We're not gonna stay here for long. You might shake your legs. If you're up for one of those vinyasas with plank and low plank, you can follow me or you just stay where you are. Moving into plank. And toes or knees, lower down. Cobra or up dog of your choice. And then child's pose. Get some distance in between your knees. Your hands can stay at the front or just bring them back down by your side. In our day and age, we are so used to shifting to partial faithfulness, which is not faithfulness. <laughs> 
And I love this verse from Hebrew 13, 8, where it says Jesus, or God, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not shifting. If God really is faithful, he was faithful in your yesterday, throughout your story. He is faithful right now. And he's faithful tomorrow as well. And bring yourself into a tabletop, less distance in between the knees, and then go for a cat. So, or sorry, your cow. So lower down your belly towards the floor, tuck the shoulders a little bit back. And then we do a cat. So navel in. Now it's up to you if you want to follow me in a camel pose, which is a could be a big uh, back bend. If you know that's not good for you, you can just choose to stay here in your cow again, or come into a cobra if you know what that is. But if you want to follow me, there's different variations of it, so you can definitely do something of it. On your knees, coming up here, make sure knees and hip is aligned and then you bring your hands behind your hip i prefer my fingers pointing up because i like that stretch in my arm and then moving the hip forward as i lean my shoulders back and maybe a pause here let it be like that if you're not used to this you want to tuck your toes under like i have here if you want more if you know your back is okay you might lean further back and maybe your fingers can reach down and find the heels Maybe you just throw your head back, maybe you hold onto your head, whatever works for you. Gaze the core, the pelvic floor as you reach up. Come down to a seat. And again, you can just stay put on the mat. I will just turn for the sake of the video. Bring your legs out to the side. Toes pointing up. Maybe you put a little bit of maybe a sock under the heels if it doesn't feel good. And then lean forward. When I think about faithfulness and God and faithfulness, I must admit it requires a certain amount of, of faith. Why isn't it just circumstances? Is it really God or was it just circumstances? Good luck or whatever we call it, fate. And that is a matter of choice. But there's also, at least in my life, pieces, sometimes large pieces, sometimes small, where it's like, that can't just be luck. There was more to it. There was more to it. And maybe as you look back throughout your life, where you are right now, Maybe you can see the bigger picture of God's faithfulness, that it wasn't just luck or fate. It was more than that. Sit up again. You might choose to let your knees or your legs stay. Bring your right elbow on the inside of the thigh here, if you can reach down. 
and let also let my hand go down. And then I'm gonna tuck my left shoulder, stack it on top of the, the other one, if I can, and then lean towards the side for a nice stretch on my left side, or your left side. And I must admit, there is also part of me that just refuses that everything is up to fate and everything is completely random. If that is the case, if nobody is faithful, what would be the purpose of life then? Why am I here? up from that stretch I know this might go a little bit deeper than you expected in a yoga class <laughs> but but I just want to mention that anyway I do believe and I do take a choice saying that life is not just a coincidence my life is not I don't believe your life is either going to the other side I do believe there is a God who is faithful doesn't mean my life is perfect far from it I can do stupid things God is still faithful <laughs> we live in a broken world things can happen in my life not because I have chosen badly it's not karma I don't believe that but things happen because we live in a broken world but God is still faithful reach up you can gather your knees maybe do a windshield wiper to shake off any stretching tension and find a seat again option to sit on the on a chair or blanket or something and take your right hand here, bring it behind your head. The left, left arm is going behind. Maybe the fingers can reach each other behind. If not, just take a sock maybe and make it so that you can hold on both ends of the sock. Sit tall with your spine. If you want to get a little bit into your thighs, you can definitely just lean a little bit forward. Feel it on the outer edge of your thighs maybe. Sit side. So after a bit of moving, maybe take the left hand behind you, right arm goes back. Again, sit up tall. And if you have your legs crossed and you're leaning forward, maybe across the it's called the awkward way. So maybe do that and again lean slightly forward. What does it mean to choose to have faith that God is faithful? What does that mean? How would that change your, your perspective on today or tonight if God is faithful?
And make yourself come into a seat. Release shoulders. Just a little bit of resting on the floor. Uh, please prioritize this. I know sometimes in a busy life we tend to, or at least I tend to drop <laughs> this resting posture, but how important is it? And also just to have time maybe to receive that faithfulness and receive that faith and healing even that God is faithful. God is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. God is not like humans who might have hurt us in any way. God is different, never shifting, never moody, and never out just to punish. I will slowly finish the video for now. If you're ready to move, you can move your ankles, your wrists, hips, maybe bending your knees, get those feet on the floor. Wave them from side to side. some point take a seat and as you sit here and I wrap up the video maybe just speak the word faithfulness maybe say it out loud faithfulness and if you like saying God is faithful maybe you say that out loud again God is faithful Take that to heart. That's my prayer for you and for me. <laughs> God blessings on your path. Thank you so much for joining.